Hey everyone, this is Aaron Spalsbury at 3X Logic. I'm the sales support manager here, and today I'm going to show you one of our new appliances called the Vigil V250. We're going to be showing you what all comes in the box as well as how to set this product up. So now we'll take a look at what comes with your V250 network appliance. Uh, this is a 1U rack mount, does fit within your standard 19 inch wide rack. It does come with the rack mount ears so that you can get this guy mounted, as well as the power cable, the keyboard, the mouse, and the terminal block if you're doing any type of alarming input or outputs. The included quick installation guide has some basic setup instructions as well as the front and back panel configuration diagrams. So now let's go ahead and make our physical connections to the back of the V250. I've got a couple things that I need to plug in. Of course, the first one that I like to plug in is the camera itself, and I like to plug it into the number one port just for simplicity's sake, but they are all PoE. You can connect it to any of these ports that you would like. I'll also go ahead and plug in the power cord. Just go ahead and just push that guy all the way in, make sure that it goes in all the way. The next thing I'm going to connect is going to be the corporate network port, which just plugs directly into the LAN port on the back of the box. You'll notice I also have a couple of uh, USBs here. The USB 2.0 no ports are here. These are the keyboard and the mouse. Go ahead and connect these two guys up. Now the next thing I'm going to connect is actually going to be my monitor. You do have two different monitor selections here, both an HDMI as well as a VGA. I'll go ahead and plug in this VGA cable here and I'll also tighten down the terminal blocks just so this doesn't wiggle out down the road if we wanted to move our monitor or anything like that. Once you have all of these connections made, come over to the rocker switch that's next to the power cord here and go ahead and throw that guy in the on position. You'll notice the unit will begin to power up. That's essentially all that there is to it. We can now move on to the next step. So now that you've got your V250 out of the box and powered up and connected to all of your cameras, uh, the next thing that you're going to be greeted with is going to be this uh, 3X Logic Easy Setup Wizard screen. Now there's a couple of options here on this screen. Simple enough, you can come down here and merely just click the continue button, or if you want to, you can exit the wizard and configure the software manually. For this video, I'm just going to go ahead and click continue. Now this will jump out onto uh, your corporate network here, and it will DHCP you an IP address so that it does configure it automatically for the network that you are on. It's also going to assign its own network for your IP cameras, as we do have uh, a network switch built into each one of these machines. Now if you do want to change any of these, you certainly can via the advanced button that will take you into the network and sharing center through Windows and allow you to change them. But for this demo, again, I'm just going to go ahead and click continue and jump over to the next screen. Now this screen, it will jump out and connect and test your internet connection to see if you are connected to the internet. You may also see a checking for update screen, and that's just checking for an update if we have anything new to add to the, uh, to the setup wizard here. Now the next screen you're going to be greeted with is going to be the system date and time. This makes it really easy for you to set it for whatever time zone you're in. And of course in my case I'm in mountain time so I'll go ahead and click mountain time here. And all we have to do is just hit continue to jump to the next page. Now on this screen, this is where you're going to actually do the system identification for these particular DVRs. Now you do want to give it a name. Now in this case, I'm just going to title it, simple enough, Aaron's DVR. I'm also going to enable Vigil Connect. Now Vigil Connect is our own DDNS server that allows you to find the machine on the internet without having to use a static IP, or more importantly, go in and actually port forward the individual ports through the router of the network you are connecting this to. So I'm going to just go ahead and put in Aaron's DVR on here as well, and I'm going to test this to make sure that that name has not already been taken. Simple enough, as you can see, of course that's a valid name. I'll hit OK and then I'll hit continue down in the bottom right corner. So on this next page we're going to be adding cameras to the system. Now you may notice the one listed there off to the right, your cameras, in this case is the 3X Logic camera. This is the Vizix series of cameras, of course being manufactured by 3X Logic by us. Now you have a couple of other options that you can add to it as well. For instance, if I had any Acti cameras maybe on my network, simple enough, I can just add that and of course we're going to run their scanning utility to see if there's any of those cameras on our network. Or, simple enough, highlight it, and then of course you can remove them or even add them all, whatever you want to do. From here, all you got to do is click the continue button. So the next page here is going to be the camera detection page, and this is where we're going to jump out onto the network and actually look for the cameras that you have connected to the V250. Uh, be patient, this will take a moment. Of course, we're going to look through a number of uh, MAC addresses and obviously the entire Vizix product line to see how many cameras that you have connected to it. 
So as you can see, this did find one of the cameras here, simple enough that we've just got connected uh, in the office here uh, for the purpose of this demo. Now you've got a couple of options here. You can add a camera manually, or you can also click the advanced button down here at the bottom. Now you notice I do have a couple of options as to which network I want to detect these on. In this case, I want to see what's connected to my IP camera ports on the back of the V250. So I'll go ahead and hit next. That'll take us over to this next screen that will actually show us what these are all set to as far as a default value. Now this is really kind of a neat thing because it will show you not only what we're going to default, the recording uh, rate as far as frames per second, but also the resolution that we're going to be using as well. So I've got a couple of options. For instance, I can come in here, I can modify the recording resolution or the quality or the recording mode, you know, all of this wonderful stuff. But more importantly, what this does show you is it does show you what we're going to set up as a default. So for instance, if I didn't want it at maybe eight frames a second, maybe I preferred it to be at three or whatever you want to set these guys to, all of these options are here. Now from here, all we got to do is just simply click the continue button. You can come down here and actually add in your email address, first name, last name, company, all of this wonderful stuff. That way you can get a copy of all of these settings that you've just entered into the V250 wizard. Essentially, we are completed. I'm going to come down here and click Finish, and this is going to save the settings to the Vigil DVR software themselves. Now that you've configured the Easy Setup Wizard, you will be prompted to change the administrator username and password. Obviously, these credentials are something that we want to set that's going to be uh, very secure. So in this case, I'm going to come in here, and I will just uh, simply put my name. Uh, my password will be my super secret password here. I can check to automatically log on, uh, obviously, to my uh, administrator account every time this machine starts up, or simply uncheck that. I also have the option of being able to create a user credential. Entirely up to you as to whether or not you want this. Of course, you can always go back into the server and add these at a later time. In this case, I'm going to uncheck it, uh, and then, of course, click OK. That's essentially all that there is to it. Now, from here, you then can jump into the Vigil server and uh, do any other configuration that you need to. But as far as the easy setup wizard goes, you are off to the races. You are recording and uh, have the ability of being able to look at live and playback. Now that you have the V250 up and running with all of your cameras connected and everything locally, I will now show you how to use the Vigil View Light application that's available both through the Android and the iOS markets. Now, you can actually use the QR scanning portion of this both through the client and the server. I'm going to start with the client, show you how to do that. The first thing you'll want to do is come up here to the top, click Servers, come down to Servers, this will open up your server, and then of course off to the right hand side you have a button labeled QR code. That when you click this, this will bring up the QR code that you will need to scan into the application. So now here we are back on my phone. I will go ahead and jump into the ViewLight 2 app. Now this is a brand new fresh installation of the ViewLight 2 app. So you are going to end up with a couple of pop-ups, uh, this being the first one. Would you like to send? A, would you like the uh, application to send you notifications? Well, yes, I would like to get things like alarming and alerts and things of that nature. So I'm going to go ahead and click Allow. Now from here, I could enter in the Vigil Connect or the IP manually, but in this case, I do want to use the QR code. Just simplify the heck out of this thing. In the upper right corner I've got the QR code uh, button. I'll go ahead and click this and it'll say hey can we access your camera because of course it does need your camera to access the QR code. So I'm going to click OK and now I can take this and present it to my QR code. Now from here we will need to enter in our username and password so that it can actually connect to it. So let me go ahead and plug that in. And sure enough, it's connected up to the server. Now, this will start to uh, automatically populate some camera views in here. A couple of quick little things just to kind of point out. You can change the layout down here by just clicking the layout button on the bottom of the screen. You can view alarms. You can clear those alarms. Those, of course, being the icons across the bottom. But one thing I definitely wanted to point out to you is if you come up here to the upper left corner and click the menu button, down at the very bottom of the screen you have a settings button. Within that settings button there is a help menu at the bottom of the screen here. Well what this does is this will actually launch you into the manual for both Android or iOS and of course I'll select iOS on this device because that's what we're using here. But we do have a really nice very well put together manual. Definitely something that you'll want to point out of course to your end users that they want to go through the software take a look at the application find out all of the neat little features that we do have built in here. But the best advice of course is it's an app get in there and play with it go have fun with the software enjoy it 
move some camera screens around, maybe save off some views, do all of that neat, fun stuff, and uh, just at the end of the day, just really enjoy this app.